Malawi, for a long time to come, will continue to rely on agriculture as the backbone of its economy. A typical Malayan farmer is a very hardworking person. They work 365 days a year. You're a smallholder farmer from the day you plant your seed and bring in the harvest, you need to manage that crop well. 60% of Malawi's foreign exchange earnings come from tobacco. We're also looking at 12% of our Malawi's population gainfully employed in the tobacco industry. Uh, but more importantly, 25% of Malawi tax base we also generates from tobacco. The system is not helping the smallholder farmer so that they are not over dependent on tobacco as a crop to improve their livelihoods. Something needs to be done. There is room for change. There are other crops which can fetch more money than tobacco would easily diversify. Maybe if we can have a crop that can help us change our lives, it could be better. This event was designed to bring people to a decision point about who will implement the Center for Agricultural Transformation initiative in Malawi. The core idea behind the Center of Excellence is to identify technologies that can really change the lives of smallholders by increasing their incomes and then putting those technologies and those products and services into the hands of the private sector. We've brought in a really world-class group of organizations, some land-grant universities from the U.S., serious implementing partners that know how to operate in Malawi. And then finally, we have some good regional players and local players to help really integrate science, technology, and innovation into the Malawian economy to help really transform the lives of, of Malawians over the next 10, 20, 30 years. What comes to mind for me in terms of a center for agricultural transformation is a little bit like the Bedouin tent. It's very important to create this sort of environment of comfort where technology is an element in the mix, but not the thing that makes people uncomfortable. We don't know yet how the center will look and what the design will be like. However, we do know that we could apply some design principles in order to engineer these collisionable moments between people who don't know each other and are from different walks of life. It's also about feeling that there's an upskilling of the whole labor force so that it improves the picture of what Malawi could become over the years. We have three gears, science and technology, research and development policies and institutions. And these are working together in coordination to achieve uh, what we aim to do. With the foundation bringing in a kind of support, that would be very, very relevant to our country. More so to a scientist like me, I don't have the tools to work with on the ground. So having a center of excellence would be just what every scientist dreams about. <laughs> Thank you very much for um, inviting Palladium to present today. Part of what we've been doing is to scale technologies and get them out for smallholders to understand and use. A lot of research that has happened in the past, somehow that has not yet been taken out to the smallholder farmers that are supposed to use that technology. So we've not really seen uh, the benefits of the research that has happened before. There's no way that you can have an impact in a region if you don't have the buy-in and the participation of research institutions, universities, education, government, and the private sector. We have left our youth behind. The youth are ahead of us in terms of technology. So we are looking at what can attract a young person, developing apps. Even if they're in a rural village, they'll still have a cell phone to get information. We recognize the role that women are playing in agriculture. How will we transform the lives of women so that they don't just provide labor, but they benefit from it? It's the partnership that we have that is going to help them to achieve that particular vision. I believe people with the capacity and competency to build sustainable, high-level value chains must get involved. And that goes beyond universities, and this is why the private sector is so important. We can take great existing appropriate technologies and we can innovate either on the product attribute side, so for example, a seed variety that exponentially becomes more water efficient, or we could innovate when it comes to the dissemination and adoption side. It's blending the science and technology research aspect with innovation and commercialization. I think what I just love about Foundation for a Smoke-Free World is that they took a mission and thought about what are the implications going to be as we contribute to the global decline in demand of tobacco. And Malawi entered that picture, and they really thought about what this means for smallholder 
farmer livelihoods in Malawi, and they're actually trying to do something incredibly constructive about it. The whole point is to channel relevant technologies to millions of smallholder farmers at scale so that they and their families can enjoy a better quality of life. We have an opportunity to really do things right. We're not doing science for science's sake. We're doing science for the sake of what can really improve agriculture in Malawi. At the moment, we are reaching out to 165,000 smallholder farmers. If we use innovation and technology, we can reach out to as many smallholder farmers as possible. We can't do it alone. We need partners. We do believe that we, together we can make a difference for the people of Malawi. I'm very excited about the Center for Agricultural Transformation because it's an opportunity to bring innovations from around the world to the small shareholder farmers and have the farmers evaluate what are the best innovations for them and their families.